Good morning. It's Friday, December 11th. And I was reading an article this morning about humans' effect on the earth. This is a scientific article, and it deals with the amount, the amount of what I'll call stuff that humans have put on this earth. And it seems that we have put more stuff on this earth than was naturally here. In other words, we have somehow or other overcome nature. I'm not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing, so I'll try to relate to you some of the information that I picked up in the articles I read. And I'll tell you one other thing. It's kind of a relief to be talking about something scientific as opposed to constantly speaking about the inane things that Trump and his acolytes keep doing. So let me get on with it. Humanity has become a dominant force in shaping the face of the earth. We have overcome nature. The emerging question is how the overall material output of human activities compared to the overall natural biomass. And when we try to quantify the human-made mass, which is referred to as anthropogenic mass, and compare it to the overall living biomass, they are now equal. And the estimated weight is approximately 1.1 teratons. I've never heard that term before, and I can't tell you how much that is, but it's a lot. And so in, in 2020, we've reached a crossover point. Since the biomass is equal to the anthropogenic mass, we in the future are going to be putting more things on Earth than nature is. That's the bottom line. Now, what you have to understand is that on average, for each person on the globe, their body weight is produced as anthropogenic mass every week. That basically means we are building, constructing things that are producing tremendous amounts of weight on the planet. In order for the scientists to do their calculations. They divided the human-made products into six main categories. Concrete, then aggregates, which represents materials like gravel, you know, bricks, asphalt, metals, and other materials, which includes the dreaded plastic and wood used for construction, and paper and glass. The researchers did not include waste in their calculations. If they had done that, we would have been in this situation seven or eight years ago. When you look at nature's side of this uh, research, you'll find that plants represent 90% of the biomass, followed by bacteria, fungi, and eventually animals. Animals make up the lowest portion of the biomass. Even though there's an ever-growing amount of the Earth's land being used to grow crops, that total mass of growing is overcome by deforestation and other shifts in land use driven by humans. So humans have actually dramatically shrunk plant mass. Plus humans hunt and fish, and uh, we raise farm animals, and that's also cut into the biomass. So given that we can measure our mass, the human mass, and the accumulation that has occurred on the planet because of it, we as humans can no longer deny our central role on the future of the natural world. We have to take a shared responsibility with the effects that we are creating on the planet. And right now the big deal is climate, climate change and the fossil fuels that we throw into the air. But in addition to that, our building, our construction, our use of materials like asphalt and concrete, 
and wood and glass and plastic also have a great effect on the future of the planet. So climate control is important, and so is mass accumulation important. Just another piece of the puzzle to the future of mankind that has to be thrown into the mix. And I think this may be a much more difficult problem to solve than that of climate change. And we see how much resistance we have to climate change in certain parts of the world. But the problem of human mass overtaking the biomass is something that I don't know that anybody could think about. It seems like that would have to be some major form of population control involved in this. Since many of the things that we do with roads and buildings and cities are done to make our lives more comfortable. And while I am sure that it took 12,000 years to get to the spot we're in right now, it may take another 12,000 years to get to the tipping point. But uh, the tipping point is probably going to happen at some time. And, you know, this generation, our next generation, and, and several hundred generations beyond that, will really have to deal with this problem. But I know it's something that very, very few people are talking about. The people that put this study together are a very small group of scientists. I don't think that anybody even knows their names outside of this little universe that they have created for themselves. So I think the big question that really has to be answered in this entire thing is how much more human mass can we tolerate and still maintain a good life? So I leave you with that thought, and I hope I haven't confused you or bored you this morning, but I thought it was a good thing to talk about. Given the fact, as I said before, we're talking too much about Trump and his acolytes and we're worrying too much about things like that right now. Not that we shouldn't be worrying about them, but they've consumed our life for several months now. So with that, I wish you all a good day and I'll see you in the morning. Bye.